Yul Brynner and Steve McQueen were two big Hollywood stars who starred together in the Western The Magnificent Seven. The clashing of egos on the set caused the two stars not to get along, and there were reported to have been numerous incidents where the two butted heads. Join Facts First as we explore why Yul Brynner and Steve McQueen couldn't stand each other. Yul Brynner started out on Broadway in The King and I. Yul Brynner was a Hollywood actor who found a niche for himself in the entertainment industry relatively easily, with his ambiguous looks that made it incredibly hard to tell where he hailed from. His mixed ethnicity made him stand out in Hollywood back in the day and made him the perfect choice to play the exotic role of King Monkut in The King and I. The King and I originated as a stage musical by Rodgers and Hammerstein. Early in his career, Yule played the role on Broadway before eventually being given the chance to reprise the role on the big screen. Yule Brenner received acclaim for his portrayal of King Monkut on stage and even wider acclaim when it came time to reprise the role on screen. He netted both a Tony Award and an Academy Award. It was only the second film he'd ever starred in. He went on to perform in several more big films over the course of his career, including The Ten Commandments and The Magnificent Seven. It's mainly Yul Brynner's time during the filming of Magnificent Seven that we'll be focusing on. As Steve McQueen put it shortly after the film's production, he was in his element during the filming, while Yul Brynner simply wasn't. Some might take Steve's remarks at face value, but there was actually a lot more to the story. It seems McQueen was intent on making Yul's life a living hell, and it eventually grew to the point where the actor couldn't take it anymore without putting up a fight. Yul Brynner hated Steve McQueen Besides Stephen Yule, the film also featured Charles Bronson, Eli Wallach, and James Coburn. It was a remake of a Japanese samurai picture called Seven Samurai, which most film historians argue remains the better film. Still, the American update is plenty beloved in its own right. It changed the setting of the plot from Japan to the West, and thus changed the genre from samurai film to Western. It's considered to be one of the best Westerns out there. Although The Magnificent Seven is highly regarded, and a big part of the appeal remains its stunning ensemble cast, Past, watching the movie becomes quite the different experience once you realize how much co-stars Yul Brynner and Steve McQueen couldn't stand each other. It's not clear why McQueen chose to pick a fight with Yul, though neither of the stars was free from their own personal struggles with their ego. And although it was clear that McQueen picked the fight, Yul was no innocent victim. He was always a bit of a diva even from his earliest days on Broadway. He memorably forced the theater, playing the original run of The King and I, to build new accommodations for himself and his limousine so he could drive off from the theater without having to interact with a single one of his fans. Given that The Magnificent Seven was an ensemble film, many of its characters didn't get all that much time to shine. Steve McQueen's character was originally only supposed to have a handful of lines, but Steve threw a fit and got the director to give him a good deal more. The director essentially let Steve McQueen take over the set of the film, and the star subsequently made the shoot a decidedly negative experience for many of his co-stars. He seemed to have an especially negative focus on Yul Brynner, and some have suggested the reason was because Steve felt Yul's character was given a nicer gun than him. Before we tell you more, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Steve McQueen abused his star status on set. Steve McQueen had it his way on the set of The Magnificent Seven. The actor got the director to give him more lines and also got to frame shots so he could take up more of the screen. Still, this wasn't enough. Steve also wanted to make the shoot a nightmare for those around. He especially didn't like Yul Brynner, and there are multiple accounts of Steve doing annoying things to piss Yul off during filming. He'd always start fiddling with something whenever it came time for Yul to say a line. He'd mess with his belt, flip a coin, or rattle around the shotgun shells he was holding. It got to the point where Yul hired a personal assistant to come onto the set of the film and count how many times Steve attempted to interrupt or distract him during the filming of his key scenes. It's unclear what exactly Yule did with this information, but it seems the assistant certainly had a good number of incidents to keep count of. Both men were shorter actors. Yule was 5'6 and Steve was 5'8. This essentially put them in the same height bracket, well below the average Hollywood star at the time. However, McQueen apparently considered himself to be an average-sized man and Yule Brynner to be something of a subhuman. During scenes filmed outside, Yule would always carefully construct a small mound of dirt he could stand on so he could look as tall as the actors around him. For his part, Steve McQueen would casually kick these small mounds down whenever he came across them out of spite for his fellow actors. 
actor. This seems to have been the thing that bothered Yule the most. Eventually, Yule got sick of it and physically confronted Steve McQueen about kicking down his dirt mounts. Steve later claimed that Yule's actual reasons for assaulting him was because the actor was jealous that Steve knew how to ride horses and shoot guns better than he did. Yule Brenner and Steve McQueen never managed to set aside their differences, but they did manage to wrap up the filming of The Magnificent Seven, and the film was a huge hit. Both of their careers were boosted from it, though neither really needed the boost. Yule was already a huge star, which was arguably a big part of why Steve McQueen was so intimidated. While Steve was a tried and true action hero, Yule was a fancier film star who had started out on the stage to great acclaim. Interesting stories about Yule Brenner. Other interesting things about Yul Brenner include the fact that he was a trapeze artist as a child. During this time, he suffered an accident that nearly left him unable to move for the rest of his life. He was also bisexual and had numerous Hollywood affairs with both his male and female contemporaries. He even got to hook up with Judy Garland and Joan Crawford. Yul Brenner was notable for his striking bald head, which he personally shaved himself because he thought it made him stand out. Apparently, Yul refused to ever be photographed alongside another bald man, as that would have made it seem like he wasn't special enough. The actor was married four times over the course of his life and passed away shortly after reprising the classic The King and I role on Broadway. This was in October of 1985. Yule starred in The Ten Commandments alongside Charlton Heston and starred in Anastasia alongside Ingrid Bergman. When Yule found out he was going to appear alongside Charlton Heston, he set about working out as much as he could so he could be more buff than the legendary tough man. But when it came time to star alongside Ingrid Bergman, Yule knew there was going to be little he could do to trick the audience into thinking he was taller than her. He didn't even bother to stand on a stool, telling the actress he intended to show the world what a big horse she was. Now it's time to hear from you. Are you a fan of The Magnificent Seven? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content. By the way, if you haven't joined Facts First as a member yet, be sure to look below this video and click the Join button. By becoming a paid member of Facts First, you'll get access to exclusive video content that you won't find anywhere else. This includes some of our more mature content that isn't suitable for public audiences, which includes topics like Hollywood actresses who posed for Playboy and some of the steamiest moments in movie history. Plus, you can enjoy these videos completely ad-free. Our biggest fans will notice they also get badges next to their name when they leave comments on our videos. We pay special attention to comments from our members and so do other viewers. So if you want exclusive content from Faxverse or inside access to discussions with other community members, click the join button to get started for just $4.99. There are hours of members only videos waiting for you with new videos added every month. And we're actively working on bringing even more features to help fans like you connect with other members and get more of your favorite content. Just click join and we'll see you inside the membership tab.